Well, you don't see that very often. Nice little pontoon boat sitting on the rocks. I'm just going to walk around it. Man, that looks like a nice boat too, man. that interior all right so we have a really windy day today um, but this bridge behind me is kind of acting as a barrier so we're gonna try fishing this wind protected area looks like it drops off off this point so I think that's where we'll start all right so I'm gonna walk out on this little sand flat we found it looks like it drops off on the other side of this I'm gonna throw this shrimp I'll start it off close to the pole, see if anything's lurking. Uh, it might have been a little too close, but I'll settle with it. So I'm just jumped out there. It sounded like a ladyfish. All right, let's try casting a little further. There we go. That's like right on the pole. Let's see if anybody's home. Oh, something's just taking off with that shrimp. See that? Oh yeah. That's a fish. Open drum. Feels like at least that's what I'm thinking. Thinking drum. No catfish, come on, no catfish. This is a cat, it's a nice cat. But I think it's a red drum or a black drum. Got the kind of the drum feel to it. A shark and that's a shark <laughs> all right uh, well he must be hooked in the corner of the mouth or I think he would have fit through our line at this point it's a little bonnet head it looks like uh, yeah he's hard to really tell how he's hooked trying to walk them to the shallower almost like walking the dog I'm gonna walk him over here where I can safely remove the hook from his mouth but my guess right now looks like a bonnet head shark juvenile yeah All right, let's bring you a little bit shallower just in the corner. Uh, you know what, let me pick you out of the water and we'll get you squared away. Yeah, that's a little guy. Uh, uh, there we go. Easy buddy, easy. Yeah, see, perfectly hooked in the side. So, no harm, no foul. I gotta just get my pliers because I'm not reaching my hand into his mouth. That would be not a very smart choice on my part. All right, let's get this guy back in the water where he belongs. A little puppy. Oh, easy buddy. Oh. Trying to get his his back on me, I feel like. You know what? I, let me put you a little bit deeper. That's on me. That's my bed. There he goes. Well, at least it wasn't a catfish. All right, so I can't be mad. I had a feeling we would see some sharks while we were down here. Um, especially this time of year, the ocean temps dropped substantially here. Oh man, look at this monster. That's a, whoa, 
monster shrimp guy at the tackle shop hooked me up man um this time of year when it, the temp drops like it does in the ocean a lot of these uh sharks are pushing these shallow areas because it's a much warmer water i mean i think the water temp difference from where i'm at now to the other side in the ocean is close to 11 degrees which is a lot that's a that's a huge you know temperature shift but well where there's sharks there should be other predatory fish so cast this guy out here maybe won't hang as close to the edge as we just were just for safekeeping something's messing with our shrimp you always feel that nervous twitch when the shrimp because the way it's hooked it can move and I, I actually learned this trip surprisingly how uh, quick those shrimp really are when you give them the chance oh see something took it and dropped it got him jack no oh yeah jack Crabell. little jack uh, that's great shark bait, but I, I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not throwing a shark rod out today. A little juvenile jack. So I do like to try and keep a little bit of slack in my line, especially with circle hooks. Um, I'm, I've learned that if I don't leave that little bit of slack in, I end up pulling the hooks more times than I'd like to admit. But there's just enough slack right now on the line where if something were to pick the shrimp up and go, it gives me that, you know, four or five second buffer that I need to prevent me from just ripping the hook out of its mouth. For, you know, circle hooks to work properly, the fish has to at least get the bait completely in its mouth. Wow, something just picked up that shrimp as soon as that hit the bottom. That's wild. Something's swimming with it right now, or trying to. See that? I'm watching the, the slack in my line right now. Just checking. Ever so often I'll check, because those pinfish are like menaces. Got them. See, ah, that's a pig fish. Actually, a not. Yeah, that's a pig fish. I'll tell you what, man, the diversity down here is unbelievable. Three casts, three different fish. And all different sizes and shapes. It's kind of funny. Go figure. The target species has eluded us so far. But the day is young. So what I'm doing right now is hooking them through the tail. That way, when they're on the bottom, in this crystal clear water, you can see he'll end up sitting upright like that, look natural, and he can crawl around. You can also hook them through the head or through the horn, but if I'm fishing a split shot on the bottom, I kind of try to keep it through the tail. If I'm fishing above, like on a float, I'll hook them through the horn, but everybody's got their own opinion on what works and why. I just kind of go with the flow, experiment. This whole trip, you know, I've been experimenting different things and you know, every day I come out learning something completely different that I never knew. There's a fish. Not really sure what. Another pig fish. Yikes. They're actually not bad to eat, but that size ain't feeding much. Well, no shortage of pigs today. I 
All right, so I don't have as much time, so I'm gonna walk to the edge over here by the bridge and throw this out. Kind of last ditch effort. Where I was just over there, caught more uh, you know, pinfish than I could imagine. So figure, let's give it a shot over here. No guarantee that there's not a million pinfish here though. But you can definitely see where it drops off here. Feed a family. That guy. 